Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Bean here, and today I'm coming at you with a wrap up. Uh, a long, long time delayed wrap up. So, this is my wrap up for both October and November because I failed to get a video up for November's wrap up. It was a whole thing where I posted a video, it didn't go up, and I didn't notice because I was busy. And then notice the next week and it just, I ended up skipping a week basically in the month of November. So apologies for that. And now I'm going to do it all right now. So we'll see how this goes. I've been having issues with filming on my camera. So, wow, that was really Midwestern. So uh, we'll see how this goes. So we're going to start with October. Um, in the month of October, we're going to start with stats because I love my stats. So in the month of October, I read eight books. Four of them I physically owned at the time. I have since gotten rid of one or two of them. Um, two of them were physically borrowed and two of them were audiobooks. Of these, three were five stars, one was a 4.5 star, two were four stars, one was a 3.5 star, and one was a DNF. Um, for pages, the longest book I read was 400 pages, and the shortest book was 112 pages. So there was one book under uh, 200 pages, two books between 201 and 300 pages, and five books between 301 and 400 pages. I'm going to put the total number of pages I read right down here because, again, I forgot to do the math beforehand. I did everything else except for the math, so we're just going to put the number right here. Um, as far as authors go, seven were from the US and one was from the UK or Ireland. But as far as gender goes, two were male and then six were female. For genre, um, two of them were nonfiction and six were fiction. For the fiction category, one was fantasy, two were thriller slash horror, two were mystery, and one was a poetry book. For the nonfiction, one was a true crime and one was a writing book. And as far as age goes, four were adult books, three were YA books, and one was a middle grade book. So there's all your books all summarized. And I didn't write them down because I'm a smart cookie. So the first book that I managed to read in October um, was an audiobook, and that was Killer Clown, The John Wayne Gacy Murders by Terry Sullivan and Peter T. Macon. Um, I have not read this true crime story before, but I have heard about the John Wayne Gacy case, and so I did want to actually listen to the full account of it so I didn't have just like rumors going through my head and such. It was very interesting, it was very disturbing, but it was very well done as far as a book about a serial killer goes. So I do recommend this one, but trigger warnings for a whole shit ton of stuff. Because, again, he's a murder rapist, so yeah. Bad person, and they don't sugarcoat things really, so I do appreciate that, um, but just so you are aware. The next book that I read was a bit of a palate cleanser for me. It was a middle grade book, and it was a middle grade graphic novel called The Hardy Boys Undercover Brothers. And this was one of their graphic novels called To Die or Not to Die. I later realized this is like number nine in the series or something, but my library only has two books. So I read this one. Um, and it was fun. It was just a fun uh, comic book or graphic novel, I suppose. I only gave it a four out of five. I loved the Hardy Boys growing up, um, and I had my favorite characters then. I mean, granted, I was ten, but, <laughs> like, I, I loved Joe Hardy. He, he was my guy. He was the first literary crush I ever probably had, um, and I do, I did enjoy this. I thought this was well done, but I missed their old mysteries, I guess. Next book that I read was The Haunting of Hill House by Shirley Jackson, and this one was interesting. Um, I absolutely loved this book. I gave it, I believe, a 4.5 out of 5 because I absolutely loved this thriller. I absolutely loved the psychologicalness that happened at the end. And, dude, this book was so interesting for me, and I know that that's a bit of a controversial issue, and that's almost, I want to say, an unpopular opinion. 
um, because people are not liking this and I really, really enjoyed it, but I love my haunted house stories as well. And I've been looking for a book that's just about an actual house that's haunted and I found one guys. I found one and I'm so excited. I also really want to watch the show now. So next year we're going to watch the show because you can't watch it in December. It just, it's weird to watch that to me. For me, it's weird. The next book is one that I no longer have, and that is The 10,000 Doors of January by Alex E. Harrow. Harrow? I DNF'd this. I know people love this book. The writing for me is way too flowery, and I just can't get into it. So this book was a DNF for me. I did not get far in, so I still don't really know what it's about. I only got like 25 pages in and I was like, I can't do this. I can't, I can't read this book. It's just too much for me. So if that gives you any idea of where I was at, I, I didn't finish it. The next book, now I'm going to struggle a little with some of the Hierarchy Poirot books I read because I read like six in the past two months. Um, but I read Cat Among the Pigeons, which was the book number 36 in the Hierarchy Poirot series. And it looks like I ended up giving it a four out of five. Um, I have been really enjoying that series, so I will say that I don't think they're getting worse. I think I'm starting to understand the way that Agatha Christie writes, and I think that's kind of my, my goal for this whole reading of all of her books, is to try to figure out how she writes and why she writes the way she does, and what that actually means for her characters and all that, so I'm very excited to be making my way towards that. The next book that I read was Lost Boy by Christina Henry. This is the true story of Captain Hook. So going into this, I don't know exactly what I expected, but I got exactly what I expected. Um, basically, this was a retelling of Lord of the Flies, which is a very disturbing book if you've ever read it. Um, but it fits the Peter Pan story. I think that this book fits very well with the Peter Pan story. Unfortunately for me, I, I had a hard time getting into it and I ended up giving it a three out of five, but the only reason was because I wanted more surprise in this book. I wanted it to be something I didn't expect the ending and I completely expected the ending. And not just because we know the Peter Pan story as it is now where he's always fighting with Captain Hook, but I kind of predicted a lot of the stuff in here, um, especially after the first like four chapters. And I was like, oh, that's what's happening. And then I was right and I was kind of sad about it, but. Overall, I still really like Christina Henry's writing. It's very dark, it's very gritty, it's very creepy. Um, like, trigger warnings. Up the wazoo again for this one. This one's got violence with the blood on the cover. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Um, it's got blood, guts, and gore. It's got abuse. It's got kidnapping. It's got all sorts of stuff in it, so... Yeah, it's a whole thing. That being said, I do still recommend it because it was still a very good book. The next one I read, oh my gosh, this one got me. And that was The Poet X by Elizabeth, Elizabeth Acevedo. I don't read a lot of poetry or a lot of verse, but dude, if you're going to try, read this one. It's so intense. I also partially listened to the audiobook at work, but I did end up reading the last like half of it because I just needed to sit down and read it faster than the audiobook was doing it. Um, I ended up giving this a five out of five. It was so good guys. It was such a good book. And again, I'm not going to tell you much about it because I don't want to spoil it, but it's basically about a girl who's breaking away from her family. Um, she's trying to do her own thing and she's having uh, kickbacks, fallbacks from that and some of the issues of her trying to go be her own person and how um, her mother is reacting and such. And so it's very interesting, very well done and oh, all the feels in this one, guys, all the feels. And the last book that I read in the month of October was Save the Cat Writes a Novel, the last book on novel writing you'll ever need by Jessica Brody. I ended up giving this a 4.5 out of 5. I really liked it. It was exactly what I expected. I did learn a lot from it. Um, I do think bits and pieces of it were things that I had 
heard or read written many a time before so so not all of it was new information but definitely a book that i would recommend keeping around if you're a writer now we're going to move on to november so in the month of november i managed to read look at it look at it 12 books i read 12 books in the month of november i am very proud of myself okay of these books Two of them were physically owned, one was physically borrowed, five were audiobooks, and three of them were ARCs, which would have made them ebooks. So, and three of them were ebooks, which also they were ARCs. So, I had actually gotten them from NetGalley, which is very exciting. I'm finally getting back into reading those books. I've read a couple, and it's good. I need to read more of them now. As far as ratings go, four books got five out of five stars, four, uh, five got 4.5 out of five two got four stars and one got three stars. Um, as far as total pages, the there was one book that was under 200 pages, four books between 201 and 300 pages, and seven books between 301 and 400 pages. The longest book I read was 373 pages and the shortest one was 196 pages. Again, I'm going to put the total number of pages right down here because, again, I didn't do the math. And I'm not doing it that quickly right here because that's a lot of numbers to add up. <clears throat> as far as authors go, um, six were from the US, five were from the UK or Ireland, and one was from Canada. And then for gender, uh, three of them were male and nine were female authors. So I think I'm a bit female heavy right now, which doesn't surprise me, but I should work on that a little bit. As far as genre goes, two books were nonfiction and 10 were fiction books. Of the fiction, one was fantasy, six were mystery, Two were magical realism, and one was a graphic novel, and that was kind of a contemporary story, adventure, contemporary story, so, yes. Um, for the nonfiction, one was true crime, and one was a mental health book that I read. Uh, for age, eight were adult books, and four were YA. So, no middle grades this month, but still, I think it went pretty well as far as my reading goes. All right, hopping right in. The first two books I read, I'm actually just going to kind of couple these together. The first one was The Adventure of the Christmas Pudding, um, which was Hercule Poirot book number 37, according to my, to what I was looking at. And then I read Double Sin and Other Stories, which was book number 38, but that included the Christmas pudding story. So I'm a little confused what happened there and I think I just got a little confused but it still technically is two books I guess so I just read the same story twice. Yeah. I don't know. I'm a little confused as how to count that one. Not gonna lie guys. But basically it was another series of short stories following Hercule Poirot as he solves some kind of smaller mysteries and it was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed these and these are more holiday themed so it was actually quite enjoyable honestly. So I, again, I'm going to keep recommending Hercule Poirot because I really like the stories. I'm enjoying them immensely. I gave this one a 4.5 out of 5, both of them. The next book that I read was actually an arc that I got a while ago, and so I partially read it and then partially listened to the audiobook, and that was Good Morning Monster. A therapist shares five heroic stories of emotional recovery by Catherine Glinder. Gild Gildner. I'm sorry. By Catherine Gildner. Um... This book took me about a month to read, actually. So I actually started this one back in October and finished it in November. Um, it was a difficult book because it is exactly what it says. I gave it a five out of five, but it um, is a therapist who shares five stories from five of her clients that really inspired her. And um, as someone who's been to therapy, I think it's really kind of cool. She did get the, th the client's permission before doing all this. They all okayed it. Uh, she changed several of the names I know. Um, but they had everything from uh, the first story was about a woman who grew up where she was the mom of the family starting when she was like eight. And she had a lot of residual anger and a lot of stuff going on there. And 
It was a very intense story. The second one was about a boy who was kept in an attic for the first 10 years of his life, so that way he wouldn't disturb his parents' business and he was having trouble um, in his personal life now. There was one about an Ojibwe who was having trouble identifying himself as what he was. A workaholic who her mother would greet her every morning by saying, good morning, monster, which is where this title of this book comes from. And it's very intense. Like these stories are super deep and super dark at points. And you think about it, like these are real people's lives. Like this is crazy, but it was so well done. I cannot recommend it enough. Um, trigger warnings for many things though, everything from rape to um, like even like to concentration camps all the way up to uh, abuse and all of this. So it's there's a lot of stuff going on here. There's a lot of stuff to unpack here. And it was very intense because the author, she also talks about what she learned as a therapist from these people and how she could have handled things or wish she had handled things or was she's glad she did this or something like that. She's very honest and very open about all this, which I think is a plus. Moving on, I needed something a little bit lighter after that, and I read The Clocks by Agatha Christie, um, which was number 37 in the series, and I do remember this one follows, there's a murder, and um, when they open the door, there's a bunch of clocks in the room that weren't there beforehand, and they're not sure where they came from, and there's a blind lady who is the one who found the body, which was another whole thing, which is very interesting. So definitely a good book. I give this one a four out of five. Very well done. And then, because I just had access to it, I read Third Girl, which was the 38th book in the Hercule Poirot series. This one, this one is about... Um, so third girl ref refers to the third girl who sh who shares E flat. So basically you have the first girl who finds the flat, the second girl who's usually a friend of hers, and then the third girl that they put out an ad to find a third girl to share a flat with. And it's about this third girl who ends up being murdered. And nobody knows anything about her, and it gets very intense and it's very well done, and I love it. So, yes. All right. Now, apparently I'm running out of space, so we're moving on now. The next book that I read was the graphic novel, and that was Harley Quinn Breaking Glass by Mariko Tamaki and illustrated by Steve Pugh. Um, this book was very interesting. I gave it four out of five because I liked the story. I liked where they took the different characters, so I think it was a well done book. Like I said, I gave it a four out of five. Moving on, I read a nonfiction again. I ended up reading Bad Blood, Secrets and Lies in the Silicon Valley Startup by John Carreyou. Um, I have not read about um, the Silicon Valley scandal, really. I've heard about it on different YouTube channels, but I honestly haven't read about it before. So I decided to pick up this book because it's been everywhere. And so I read it and it was very interesting. It was I didn't understand everything about Silicon Valley because I don't understand everything about Silicon Valley, but I understood what happened. And I make myself sound really stupid when I say that, but it's more a lot of the tech jargon didn't re I didn't know what it meant. And they even admitted, it's like, yeah, we didn't know what it meant, but it, we went with it. And it was like, okay, cool. Um, so I ended up giving this a five out of five because I really enjoyed it and I really got drawn in. And dude, that was a, that was an, that's a scandal right there. All right, I'm almost done, promise guys. Uh, the next book I read was an ARC and it was an uh, audiobook ARC that I got from Audible, from uh, NetGalley. And it was Aloha Alibi, a Charlotte Gibson mystery number one by Jasmine Webb. This was super fun and I really enjoyed this book. I gave it a 4.5 out of five because it was just a lot of fun. Um, all about this girl, and it was all about this girl who moves back to um, Hawaii after an encounter with a gang that is now apparently after her head and yeah it's like a whole it's a it's a very interesting intense kind of thing um, I do I will say one thing about it is that it never did stop like you could never take a breath and calm down it just kept going so that was a bit of a downer I'm not gonna lie but other than that, I really did enjoy it. So highly recommend. It is, as of right now, three books. So I will be reading the next two as well.
The next book that I read and finished was Under the Whispering Door by TJ Klune. I'm very excited to have read this book. I gave it a 4.5 out of 5. I think the problem is that I read it so soon after I read um, The House in the Cerulean Sea was that I, I, I knew it was going to happen. It follows a very similar plot line, um, but it was so gorgeous and so well done. But yeah. I loved this book. I loved all the characters. I loved how things went. I loved how they show um, how Walter changes over time and how everyone else changes as well. And I just, I, well, I would love to spend more time in this world. I really would. I think this series, this collection of books that are in the same world are very well done and they're so hopeful. They're so nostalgic. They're so just, this seems, this feels like a Studio Ghibli movie right here to me like that's that's what I'm seeing like it's all about normal things happening and then they're like well let's see what we can do with normal everyday occurrences like just going to your job like dying is a normal occurrence I know we don't like talking about it but it is a thing that happens a lot so I think this book was gorgeous and well done and it was just the ending <laughs> that's it but it was I think it was wonderful I really do the next book that I read, <coughs> I tried to start getting into um, some uh, Christmas holiday books. And I read All I Want for Christmas is The Girl Next Door by Chelsea Babolsky. I gave this book a three out of five because it was like a wannabe Hallmark movie that got a little dark at one point, but then also I... Hmm... I feel like I use this a lot, but I predicted exactly what was going to happen and I wasn't surprised by any of it. So that was disappointing on my part, but it is a series. Hopefully it'll be better, but I am done with this series. I read it. It was fine. It was fine. That's about what I got for you guys. All right. And the next book that I read, I'm almost there, was Curse of the Spectre Queen by Jenny Elder Moak. This is the first book in the Samantha Knox series. I loved this book. This book was advertised as Indiana Jones in the 1920s following a female lead. That's exactly what it is. Like, there, that is exactly what it is. And it was one of those where I wanted, like, a, some sort of twist, and I got some sort of twist. It was Indiana Jones, and I loved it, and it may, it brought me back to my childhood because I grew up watching Indiana Jones. Yeah, that explains so much, doesn't it? Um, but I loved this book. This book was so well done, and I read it really quickly. Um, I read it over, like, it would have been over the course of about four and a half hours. Um, I finished the whole thing, which is not my best reading, but... Um, I also had to take a nap in the middle because it was one o'clock in the morning. So yeah, highly recommend. Super well done. I can't wait. And I'm really sad that the next book doesn't come out until like July next year. What the heck? The last book that I read in the month of November was a Hercule Poirot book and that was Halloween Party by Agatha Christie. It was number 39 in the series. I'm getting there guys. I'm getting there. Almost there. Um, and this one is about a kid's party, a teenage kid's party. So anyone under the age of, I think it's 18 or at this party. And um, one of the teenagers ends up dying. And it's all about how she died, why she died, what happened? Why is there a teenager dead here at a party? It was very interesting. I think it was very well done. And I ended up giving it a five out of five because I really liked it. That's what I got for you guys here today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Sorry, I'm kind of rushing through it. One, I'm going to be late for work if I don't hurry up. And two, my phone's being weird about filming. So hopefully I'll come at you next year with a brand new camera. That is my hope is new camera. I'm looking for it. I, I would like one, please. That would be great. Um, but generally, um, hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you liked any of these books or if you have any more recommendations for me, do let me know down below in the comments. And until next time, guys, if you enjoyed us, please subscribe um, and hit that little like button. We post videos every Tuesday, Thursday, and the occasional Sundays. And until next time, stay safe, stay healthy, and keep reading. Bye!